Hey guys, I'm channeling my inner this old house today. I'm on the job where my company is just finishing this beautiful and quite large custom home. This is a house we've been working on with Shiflet Group Architects. 7,000 square feet of lake house right here in Lake Austin outside of Austin, Texas. And in the build show today, I want to talk to you about our hot water strategy. When you build a big custom home or if you currently have a big custom home, you have to think a lot about how you're going to deliver hot water to all those far recesses in the house. So let's meet at the mechanical room. Let's get going. Okay, y'all, we're in the garage behind you here, and I've got a couple closets that house our mechanicals, and this is really what I want to show you today. This is our, basically our boiler room. This is where all the hot water for the whole house happens. Now, I mentioned earlier, this is a 7,000 square foot house. I've got seven bedrooms and bathrooms. This is a very large place, including a giant tub in the master. So we've got a lot of hot water needs in this house. Here's what we did. I've got two units that are not quite boilers, but are pretty close. If you're not familiar with these, this is the Aosmith Vertex system. Now, I've used these on a bunch of houses and had really good success for about the last 10 years now. Here's what I like about this. This is actually a residential unit. It's a 100,000 BTU input, 50 gallon tank, and it's very, very efficient, actually 96% efficiency. So every dollar of natural gas I put in there, 96% of that is getting converted to hot water. Only 4% is lost to inefficiencies. And because of that, it can vent with PVC. Now we've done everything but hook up the venting on this, so we're not quite complete yet. But you see here, we've got a two inch PVC here and there, and then ultimately that will go to the outside so it's not gonna need to pull any air in from the mechanical closet. It's bringing air from the outside, burning that, and then sending that outside. And then that uh, unit actually has a spiral in there so that as that burner gas goes through the tank, it's losing all that additional heat. And that's one of the reasons why it's so efficient. And then the outside of the house will have a cap like this. And this is kind of cool. This tells the story. This is what they call a concentric cap, meaning this is the air right here that it's pulling in to burn and then this is the exhaust air. And if you look at this on the side here, you can see that the burner air can come from all sides like this all the way around, but the exhaust is just gonna come out right here. That's what I like about these units that are sealed combustion. Now something else we did here that I haven't done before is this right here. This is Nibco's press system. So these are copper fittings, but instead of the standard sweat system, it's actually a crimp uh, process. Now, I've seen this done before with uh, Vega's Pro Press. I didn't actually watch the plumbers do this one, but basically here's how it works. You're gonna slide your copper in there. You're gonna prep it properly, and then they're actually gonna crimp this right here with this special crimper tool, and you're gonna look, if you look closely, it's crimping it on both sides of that O-ring that's in there, and that's where these little uh, marks are coming from. It's got, t I don't know how much power, probably somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds of press capacity, and that's what's making those indents. And I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen this one in action before, but I've seen the Viega system, which I think is similar, and I'll tell you, it yields, as you can see, a beautiful result. And the other nice thing about that system is there's no flame involved, right? You can do that in a finished closet like this, where the drywall and the paint was already up, and I don't have any flame marks, I'm not worried about burning the house down. I can see why it's used so much in commercial buildings. I think we're going to start seeing that in residential houses quite a bit more as well. Okay, now let's take a look at all this piping back here. Beautiful work by the plumbers, by the way. But here's what we've got going on. This is the input right here, and then this is the output hot water. And what I wanted to, to mention is that both of these units, because the house is so big, they're on a circulator system. If you've not seen one of those before, let me show you basically how this works. This is a Grunfos pump right here. And this is on the supply side right here. And what it's going to do is it's got a timer and it actually has a um, thermostatic control as well. So we haven't installed the timer yet, but that's what the timer will look like. And this one also has a thermostatic kit or what they call an aquastat kit. And this will get hooked up as well to that pump. So what's going to happen is the pipe will slip in here like this. And then this guy has a temperature sensor in there which will tell that pump, okay, we're gonna turn on, let's say from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. every day, if that's the typical family's hours for using hot water in the morning. That pump is gonna circulate the water throughout the house on the trunk and branch system. 
so that all the branches are charged, but, or pardon me, all the trunk is, trunks are charged, but when someone turns on a fixture, all they have to do is get the cold out of the branch. So they're gonna get hot very, very quickly delivered on this house, even though it's so big. However, this little uh, aquastat on there is also gonna say, hey, the water's hot on there, we can turn off the pump. Once this reaches 130 degrees, it's gonna turn the pump off, and here's the cool thing about it, it's set for 110 degrees to turn the pump back on. So the water's gonna circulate, it's gonna get everything in all the house charged through all the main trunk lines, and then when this says it's 130 degrees, it'll turn off, until this gets down to 110 and then it'll turn back on. So in theory, we're gonna save some energy by not continuously running that. You do need to do a good job though of coaching your clients to make sure that this is set correctly and as a builder, I'm gonna make sure that my guys are setting this for the clients and talking with them. We don't wanna run this 24 seven. If you were at a hotel, they would do that, but there's a lot of wasted energy on that. On a house like this, we only wanna run this when it's really the high demand times. Okay, another cool thing about this system that I wanted to mention, because these are such big burner sizes, 100,000 BTU, we've got massive hot water delivery, even though the tank is not very big. Here the energy guide tells you that story. So first off, you've seen this before. I've talked about the annual energy costs. Look at this one. It's actually 215, which is below what the lowest number on there, which is 225. I think that's kind of cool. But then check out the first hour hot water delivery. This will actually deliver 100 gallons of hot water in the first hour. Interesting there's a discrepancy here though. If you look around the other side here on the label from the manufacturer, it says 115 and this says 100. I think that's to do with the inlet temperature. This is probably at a 90 degree rise and it may be 115 at let's say a 75 degree rise. Now I'm in the south here, my inlet temperatures are not as cold as they are if you're in the, in the cold north, but this unit's gonna add a lot of hot water to the house and you're gonna have a hard time draining that. However, we've also put a U connector in here with a really nice ball valve so that, let's say if one of these units uh, had a problem, 10 years from now, something happens, we have a problem with the unit, we can actually get all the hot water from the whole house from just one or currently the way it's set up, I've got this unit right here on this wing of the house where all the kids are, and this unit right here on the back wing where it just houses the master bedroom, master bath, and I've got a really nice steam shower, a big tub, so they're gonna need that capacity and that volume occasionally. And now they're not gonna worry about, the kids had a long shower, they've got their own, but if something happens, I can connect the two with that valve right here. Speaking of that valve, you know what a nerd I am about valves, if you've followed me before. I thought this Nibco valve was kind of cool. This is also with their Nibco press system. So there's that copper fitting with that, um, with that gasket on the inside. But check out that ball valve on there. Let's see if I can rotate it so you can see it on the camera. How cool is that? Full port valve. Man, that's really nice. Just so satisfying with a nice big handle. Really easy. You know that anytime it's in line, it's on. Anytime it's at a 90 degree angle, it's off. Man, that's a really nice system. Guys, I'll put links to uh, all the stuff we talked about in the description down below so you can see the manufacturers on these different units. If you're not already a follower of The Build Show, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.